The world can be a strange, confusing place. The top Iranian general has been killed in an airstrike while leaving the Baghdad airport. Now to Australia, where they're facing those massive fires, already among the worst in that country's history. The mystery virus started here in the city of Wuhan. Chinese authorities pinpointing its source to this food market. Life in Italy has officially crawled to a halt. Another night of chaos and unrest as anger over police killings spread to every corner of the country. Of course, we all know that all too well by this point. What was supposed to be the year of positivity, change in unity, has devolved into consisting of nothing but tragedy, mundanity, and isolation. It's been a shitty year to say the least. In the midst of everything, a trend had emerged that gave people the outlet to get out, to go explore, and to experience all the natural wonders that they likely wouldn't have seen otherwise. Trailblazed by an app named Randonautica, Players all over the world have been sent on adventures to allegedly random GPS coordinates within a few miles radius of them. What could go wrong? Well, quite a bit actually. Quite a bit. On the 20th of June, 2020, a TikTok user by the name of Uch Henry would upload a video with the caption, something traumatic happened that changed my life. It involves the exploration of a GPS location given to them by the Randonautica app. And at first, it doesn't seem like anything that we haven't seen before. If it weren't for the creepy, scary horror, synth tension, sound production, gen stock effect that they added to the video, then the beginning of it would honestly be pretty lighthearted. The initial vibe that I gathered from their discovery was interesting, but not malicious. However, I was wrong. Let's watch it together. Guys, we found a, a suitcase at the beach. Yeah, I can go. I'll hold your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Bro. <laughs> Wait, open it. <laughs> open it. <laughs> it stinks, y'all. It washed up. It's oh. Oh. <gasps> oh. oh. Okay, so she made. Okay, so she's calling the police so we can see if it's actually a dead body or it's just food. What do I? Found a suitcase on the beach. Y'all, here's the crime scene. <laughs> You saw the end of that video, so you know where this is heading. As it turned out, the contents of the suitcase wasn't food or anything innocent like they were hoping. They were actual, real-world human remains. And the investigation was on. While police and detectives were working to identify the bodies, the TikTok video blew up on social media. It seemed like everyone was talking about it, and there was a clear emphasis on the app in which the teens located the suitcase from. Randonautica. Was there more to it? Were they hiding something? How are they determining the GPS coordinates that they feed to their users? Let's come back to this.
10 days later. Tonight we are learning, uh, we are starting to learn more about the two people whose remains were found in bags along the shoreline in West Seattle. On June 30th, Seattle detectives would identify the remains as those of not one, but two people. 35-year-old Jessica Lewis and 27-year-old Austin Winner were killed by gunshots an undetermined amount of time prior to their discovery. The killer and motive have also not yet been determined, and according to police, this remains an active and ongoing investigation. It's a tragic and disturbing situation that's typically the work of nightmares. Realizing that these people had lives, jobs, loved ones, and aspirations, with their fate reduced to being stuffed inside of a suitcase and discovered on TikTok of all things is one of the more depressing turn of events I've looked into. May they rest in peace. No one deserves that. This bothered me. Something about a random group of teenagers stumbling upon a dead body through a supposed random GPS adventure app rubbed me the wrong way. This had to have been an isolated incident though. Let's be real, this entire situation happened through mere coincidence, right? Wrong. I opened up TikTok and scoured the Randonautica hashtag. As it turned out, there were quite the hefty few that also encountered strange discoveries when they were out exploring. Since the phenomenon's become borderline mainstream, we unfortunately do have people exaggerating like some of the boss baby calling 3AM channels that we've seen in years past. You know who you are. But we also have a ton that seem entirely legitimate. Let's take a look at a few notable ones. This is weird, but it gets weirder. We found a huge bird's nest. Like, what is this? Or at least that's what I thought it was. And then there was this path. I don't know what it is. If you know what it is or what it means, comment down below. I don't know if it's like witchcraft or something. I'm scared. <laughs> and then there was like a bunch of random stuff inside in the middle and a bunch of rocks. So basically it led us to a big bird's nest. Okay, if you have seen any TikToks about the Rando Nautica app, I'm shook. You need to keep listening. My boyfriend and I were supposed to get this kitten today, and my mom said no, so of course we were really sad about it. And then I saw a TikTok about the Randonautica app, and I was like, mm, we need to do that because I really want a kitten. So, this is the location it gave us. As you can see, it's five minutes from where we live. Um, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere, but there was easy roads to get there. And there was a gate blocking us from getting where we needed to be. Then when I was turning the car around, I kid you not. Come here, buddy. This kitten was there. So I just went rando naughty. <laughs> I just went rando naughty. And our intention was death. <laughs> we were on our way to the spot. And I look out my window and there's someone laying in the gutter with their wife literally like on them, holding them. And so I parked and got out and he got shot. And then, <laughs> and then she gave me that phone and I had to call the cops. And Darius was, he wrapped his jacket around the wound. And then the cops came and we got questioned and I just had to leave. And I just dropped Darius and Darius off. <laughs> okay, so this random nodding app just brought us to this creepy town, and honestly, when we saw this, we should have turned around and left. We continued up the mountain, though, and there's always abandoned cars and nobody around. At this point, we're definitely trespassing. We couldn't even really turn around at this point because the road was so narrow and it was such a steep drop off on the other side. We were kind of intrigued at how creepy this was, even though it was getting dark really quick, and next thing we know, the sun had gone down, 
and the moon came out, giving it just more of a creepy vibe. But we had the pin pulled up, we were so close to it, and this what happened. The fuck is I don't know how to explain this, we're the only ones around, and a random rock falls, I think that was a sign that we should leave. But, we, uh, we kept going. Everything about this place was just giving me really bad vibes, and when I looked into here and saw this, as soon as I realized it's some sort of face, we took off running. I don't know what it is with this town, why there's all these abandoned cars, and no people, and mannequins in the window, but I'm deleting this. So as we can see, results can heavily vary. Some people stumbled upon what appear to be ritualistic sites, strange people, clingy animals, and even old friends? It definitely is interesting seeing all of these discoveries coming to fruition. It's almost like the world's a bit stranger than we all thought. Who would have known? With this in mind though, how are these people able to stumble upon such odd phenomena? Does the app know something that we don't? Is it made to inherently disturb you? How does it pick its locations? It's something that's actually really starting to fascinate me, and so I embarked on a hunt to figure out exactly what a randonaut is and how the app works. I eventually stumbled upon an article on medium.com that dives into the subject matter. Part one, what is a randonaut? A randonaut is a person who explores both the application and impact of randomness in the experience of everyday reality. This exploration into randomness can be carried out in several different ways. The two primary experiments that randonauts are currently exploring are blind spots and mind matter interactions. A blind spot is a place in the real world that you would never normally encounter through any chain of causal experiences. We as humans tend to live structured, patterned lives. Our everyday experience throughout the social and geographical world is guided by our internal mental makeup, which may contain some share of determinism. On the other hand, mind-matter interactions encompass the other side of randonauting. This is the idea that the human mind actually has a statistically significant impact on the output of quantum random number generators. The Fatum bot can generate what are called intention-driven anomalies, which are coordinate locations that are calculated based on the density of QRNG outputs and which are often explored through the use of intention. What this potentially means is that your mind can have some influence on the location and subsequent experience that's generated by the bot. Interesting. While blind spot interaction is mostly cut and dry, mind-matter interactions are where it can get a bit confusing. From what I gather, the article is essentially explaining that when you set what they call an intention for your use of the app, then the bot can adjust the location it gives you accordingly. I'm not entirely sure how specific it can get or how strong the effect is, but I have a funny feeling that it relates a bit to confirmation bias. An example being if you set out to a location with the intention of finding a stray cat, then you'll be more hypervigilant on finding one. And if you do, then, well, this is why. The article continues. Randonautica is known to track your location and log your IP address to assist the bot in algorithmically determining specific locations for you to visit. It's also known to perform retinal scans using the front camera of each user's mobile device at any given time, with or without explicit consent. The gathered data and footage is then logged by deep web hackers to dox you and steal your passwords. They then take your passwords to hack your bank account and slowly siphon money so they can fund the Randonautica app and get more users. After they've taken all your money and sent you spiraling into a deep crippling debt, they utilize their previous dox information to hunt you down. I'm just kidding. It doesn't do that. The confirmation bias thing though, I think there's some believability there. If you think about it, the effect is stronger than you think. If you don't believe me, then I want to test that with you right now. After you finish the video, I want you to go back to your daily lives and do whatever it is that you do. When you're doing that though, remember the number 21. Anyway, enough messing around. The science behind Randonautica clearly is strange. 
People have been stumbling upon weird phenomena for months, and that's not even including the incident in Seattle. And with that, I know what I must do. We've got to try this. You and me. So I downloaded the app and was a bit surprised after opening it. The UI is nothing like I expected it to be. I shared my location with them, and now I'm at a crossroads. It's our choice now. We're given the option between choosing if we'd like an anomaly, an attractor, or a void. According to the app, attractors are dense clusters of random points. Voids are the opposite. Anomalies are the strongest out of attractors and voids. Wait, what? Strongest relative to what? Ah, oh, screw it. Let's give it a shot, I'm curious. Choose your entropy source. Uh, it's been a while since I've taken physics, give me a second. Entropy. A thermodynamic quantity representing the unavailability of a system's thermal energy for conversion into mechanical work, often interpreted as the degree of disorder or randomness in the system. Huh. Alright. Let's just go with ANU, since I'm still unsure. Well, looks like we got it. So let's go. So I met up with the crew, Mama Max and Night Docs, and we hit the road in hopes of finding something. When finding you a location, the app asks you to set an intention for each trip, and it's basically what you hope to find wherever you go. We said our first one is death, and this is what we found. Absolutely nothing. Uh, maybe this wasn't a good spot. Let's try another. Max set the intention this time, and it was Satanism. Let's see what we got.
I'll admit it is a bit creepy being out here at 2am. But satanic symbolism seems to be escaping me. I hate to say it, but there doesn't seem to be much here either. Maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. Or maybe this spot's another dud. Let's try one more. Intention. Cults. Oh, I really? really wanted to find something here. That cult symbolism's gotta be somewhere. Of course, as you might expect, we also left this one empty-handed. It bothers me, because in our experience tonight, the app didn't give us anything. We didn't find death, or cults, or Satan, or what have you. It was just... ordinary. With that, I don't think the app's connected to serial killers like some were claiming. I think it's either all massive confirmation bias and coincidence, or most of the popular randonautic TikToks are fake. I'm sure there are some legitimate ones out there, but like we hinted at at the beginning, some honestly do seem heavily exaggerated. I don't have concrete, irrefutable proof, but in my opinion, that's what it appears to be. Randonautica isn't creepy. It doesn't have a conspiracy behind it. It isn't some serial killer logbook. It's just an app that's had an unfortunate coincidence and sparked a wildfire of conspiracy theories around the world. Tonight, we didn't find anything creepy, but we didn't leave empty-handed. Maybe the true Randonautica were the memories we made along the way. The boys, the boys memories, 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 memories. There you go again. I'm like all paranoid about it. I probably had a really weird look at that. As we've seen, the Randonautica app is an incredibly interesting one that sent people on local adventures all over the world. The Seattle situation, by far, stands out as one of the most disturbing discoveries ever made due to the app. However, to me, everything else about it just stands out as nothing but massive confirmation bias. Remember, trepidation is relative. If you set out through Randonautica looking for something to freak you out, then chances are, you just might find something. For the most part though, the app seems to be relatively safe. Get out, embark on an adventure. Just remember, always bring someone with you and never, ever, give the app the intention of <laughs>